Hi, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to another Iron Hack webinar. If you haven't seen me yet in other webinars, my name is Raquel. I'm talking to you from Lisbon. Uh, and if it's the first time that you're here, again, let me uh, go through what Iron Hack is all about. So we are a global tech school, and we have boot camps on web dev, on data, UX, UI design, and most recently, cybersecurity. Uh, and we have campuses all over the world, even though because of the current times, uh, most of us are not in campus anymore. We still have them and uh, with all the measurements going on. Uh, I see that a lot of people are from Amsterdam, Paris, Malaysia. That's amazing. Well, uh, regarding Iron Hack, still, uh, besides the, our campuses that we have in Europe and in America, we also have remote boot camps for web dev. Um, so if you have any questions regarding this, we have like very useful links here in the green button that you can see here below the video. You can you can click there and you can go through the website and most of, oh, amazing. I was going to ask where most of you are seeing us from, but I can see that this is a very uh, broad audience in terms of, wow, amazing, Berlin, Singapore. That's great, guys. I'm talking to, to you from Lisbon, but these guys are from the US. They will they will tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, but before we go on through the actual webinar, let me go through a little bit of Crowdcast rules, um, if it's the first time that you're here. So um, as you can see uh, here, as you can see, because you've been chatting in here, we have a chat. This is where you can leave your comments, your feedbacks, uh, and maybe share some stuff. But we also have an ask a question section in here below the videos. Some of you have already seen, I think. Uh, this is where you will be, uh, I will encourage you to ask questions during the webinar. This will be practical and you can try and code along. So if you have questions, please leave them here and ask a question. As you can see, you can upvote them. So if, this is a if there's a question that you really want to see answered, upvote it so it appears on top. Other than these questions, you can also see there's also a topic with a link. This link you will be need for the code. You will be needing. You will be needing this for the code along. Nicole will tell you. But please click on the upvote button so it appears on top for everyone. Okay. So this is the ask a question. You will be needing this because I'm sure you'll be having questions during the webinar. And while Nick will be presenting the webinar itself, Val here will be answering all your questions in this section. The ask a question and. Please don't don't put put them on the chat, but if so, she will be answering on the chat as well. Okay, so this is from the webinar part. Uh, in the, uh, uh, as I told you, I'll be doing this small introduction in the beginning, but then Nico will go through the webinar, and in the end, if we have time, uh, we will open a small Q and A uh, live so you can answer questions about the webinar, about our courses, our hack in general, uh, and we'll be answering after that. Oh, and last but not least, this webinar is recorded. So if you feel like you missed on something or you want to remind uh, what you've learned here later, you can always come back to this link. In any case, we will give you a follow-up email with this. Okay? So uh, I hope you can hear me well and you can hear Nico well. If not, leave a comment on the chat. Um, and I think that's it. So I'll pass the word to Nico. I hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> I think you got everything, Raquel. How's it going, everybody? My name's Nico. It's nice to meet you guys. I see that we got a really diverse group here. That's pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm joining you. I represent the Miami campus, and Valerie, she is she's joining us uh, from uh, Los Angeles. All right, so she'll Hi. be happy to answer <laughs> all your questions. All right, awesome. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to talk about what we're going to build. Click it and share it. Okay, and excellent. We are going to be using CodePen today. Okay, and CodePen, if you can just go to codepen.io. Uh, if you create an account, I suggest you do, then you'll be able to save the code pens, and you basically can type HTML, CSS, and JavaScript here. So it's a really nice and easy way to just go ahead and start coding online. Um, let's go ahead and get started. All you really have to do is type right in here and then it'll auto refresh and i'll say that you'll see the html right here okay and if you want to save what you've done you just click this save button which i suggest you do every time you feel like you're in a good spot all right and that way if you save it and you refresh you won't you won't lose what you've done okay one more thing that we're going to get into right now is we're going to go and start talking about the console okay so right here, if you click on this console button down here, 
All right, you can X out, you can click it open like this, okay? This console, all right, I'm gonna give you guys a little, a few minutes just to get all the stuff situated, right? But this is where you'll see your JavaScript, okay? So if you write JavaScript right here where it says JS, you'll see it happen here, okay? You have, you'll see it if you type console log, right? And you'll see this is JavaScript, okay? You'll see it written right down there, right there in the auto refresh, right? Okay, so I don't have to hit save or anything. It just automatically does it, okay? And it might, it does it when you stop typing after a second. So there might be, you know, a little mistakes here and there. You can always just clear it, okay? Type a little more. I can't do a smiley face, I'll do an exclamation mark, and you'll see it, okay? Right, awesome, right? And so this is basically, you can think of this as the behind the scenes of your app. This is the web page, this is the thing that people will see, this is your HTML, right? This is what people would see when visiting your site, okay? Your site, okay? And this is the JavaScript. This is the behind the scenes. Okay, right? There we go. And again, it auto saves. So you'll see it written a bunch of times. You're not doing anything wrong. You can always just clear, okay, anytime you feel like it. Okay, so there we go. So let's talk a little bit about HTML. <laughs> some of this might be a review for some of you people, but uh, for some others, this might be the very, very, very first time you're seeing any of this. So we'll go quickly and just talk a little bit about what all these things do. HTML is basically hypertext markup language, and that's what you see on the page. So you can put in tags like this, and they have built-in attributes. Sorry, slash. Okay. And now you'll see that this is bigger and bolder. Okay. If you go for H1, it'll be even bigger and bolder, right? And if you go to H6, it's the smallest, okay? And you can do all sorts of other things like italics, okay? And that'll make it italicized. This will make it bold, okay? And there's tons of these, okay? So just pay attention. Don't worry about retyping this. This isn't part of our game yet, right? But basically, this is just the text. And you can mix and match them any way you see fit. So for instance, I can go ahead and make this one italic and the other one bold. And there you can see the difference right there, okay? CSS is our way of styling things. We're not gonna do it a lot, but just so you know, right, you can go ahead and you can make the, the bold tags, the color red, for instance, okay? And the eye tags, you can make them the color green, okay? Very simple, right? And you can even do all sorts of other things like increase the font size, and do a million different other things, okay? But again, we're not gonna be dealing too much with styling today, we're just going to be dealing mostly with JavaScript. And the logic to build a game, the game is gonna be Clue, okay? So Clue, and I read online that the only Clue in North America, and much of the rest of the world, it's Clue Do, Clue Do, Clue Do, okay? Uh, whichever one, you want to call it, it's fine by me, okay? I'm going to refer to it as Clue because that's just the way I was brought up, right? And so basically, this game is about having a people, basically, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a murder mystery game where there's a suspect, a weapon, and a room. And the idea is to guess who murdered in what room with what weapon, okay? So it sounds pretty dramatic but it's, it's pretty friendly game, so let's get into it, okay? So first things first is that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the console, okay? We're not gonna worry too much about the HTML right now, okay? So here in the console, okay, you can go ahead and do all sorts of things, right? We can console log two plus two, and of course, you're gonna get four, okay? You can also do this sort of stuff down here, okay, as well. Add and do math and, or all sorts of other things. Okay, we're gonna use uh, lots of for loops, uh, arrays, objects, strings. Okay, so all these words may be new to you. So I'll describe what each one does. Okay, first, a lot of times you go ahead and you define variables. This is a variable. Variables either start with let or const, and they can be all sorts of things. So if you want a word, for instance, it's often 
a string. Okay, so you can go ahead and say this word, for instance, we're going to say a candlestick. Okay. Now we define this variable, okay, and we can use it later on. So if I console log word, we will see candlestick. Okay. And it's that way you can go ahead and you can change it if you want. All right. I'll say hammer. Okay. And you'll see now the candlestick has become hammer. Okay. If I clear it, press enter and run it again, you'll see that. Okay. I'm going to go over some of the basics. If you're going to code along, I'll, I'll tell you when it's a good time to start. Okay. But right now I'm just going to go over some very, very basic, uh, some very, very basic data structures. Okay. So that is known as a string. Okay. Number. Okay. It's pretty obvious. It's just a number, right? Okay. So now we have a number so like this. And we can go ahead and we can console log both of these. And you'll see one is candlestick and one is a number. Another data structure is known as an array. And this is kind of like a list. Okay. And this can be all sorts of things. So this could be, for instance, um, you know, in this specific uh, example, you know, we're going to be using like pistols and this kind of thing. So we have a pistol and we'll, just, we'll put a number in there. We can also put pancakes. You can put whatever you want in here. Okay. All right. And so now this is in a list of stuff. All right. And in that list, you can go ahead and pick whichever item you want. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I want the first item, it's zero indexed, so I go zero, okay? That would be the pistol. This would be the second one, which is the number. This would be the third one, which is the pancakes, okay? And so basically, this number corresponds to the order in which it's in, okay? And so this is just known as an array. It's very common for a list. You can put all sorts of different things in a list. Okay, moving on to another thing is an object. Okay, and I'm just calling them these names, but you can actually refer to them any way you want. And that's another type of list, a type of list that has curly braces. This one has square brackets. And the difference between these two lists really is that in this one, you have them based by numbers, zero, one, two, et cetera. But in objects, you have a key value combination. So for instance, you can have a we are going to say, I don't know, peacock. Okay. And now if we want to get the name, we have to say object dot name. You'll see the right there. There's our peacock. Let me do that again. Okay. Say, okay, so this is the array. This is the one that says pancakes. And this is the one that says peacock. Okay. And so basically, this is yet another list, and you can have as many values as you want here, right? Colorful, right? Is true. Okay. And uh, age is very old peacock. We're going to say it's a 87 year old peacock. Okay. So boom, and now if we want to access this, just like we use object.name, we can say object.age. And we'll see the 87 pop up right there, okay? So these, again, are strings. This is known as numbers. This is known as arrays. This is known as objects. And these are referred to as keys and values, okay? And these are just some of the most basic parts of JavaScript that we are going to be using in order to build this game. One of the most common things you'll see is an array of objects. So yes, you can put inside of this array the actual object itself. And so right now, the last part of this array, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, if I change this to 3, is actually this object. So I can actually go, I can combine them and say the third one of this array, its name is going to be Peacock, right? Is it colorful? It is, okay? And how old is it? It is 87 years old, okay? So there we have 
arrays, objects, numbers, and strings. I would key is this part of well, to the left of the colon. Value is this part. Okay, and you can intermix this any way you want, and you'll find that you often do. Awesome. So moving forward, okay, we are going to build this game based on lots of arrays and objects. I shared with you guys, or uh, I think Raquel did and Val did, this file called clue.js, and this is a bunch of predefined objects. Okay, these are all objects, all right? And we're going to need these objects to build our game, okay? So if you are going to code along, this is a good part to start, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to go to this file. We're going to copy this, okay? So copy the whole thing, okay? And then we're going to head back to our code pen, okay? And we're just going to paste it, all right? Now we have all these objects here waiting for us to use them, okay? And this way you don't have to go ahead and type all this out individually. That's just cruel. We don't want to do that to anybody, okay? Assuming we are comfortable with this material, okay? I am going to take this out and start afresh with this, all these new objects, okay? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit the save button so that we don't lose the work we've done, okay? And we're not gonna deal with peacocks or paint, pancakes anymore. Instead, we're going to deal with all these objects. And these objects, for instance, are the suspects in our game. So Mr. Green, Dr. Orchard, Professor Plum, Miss Scarlet, Miss Peacock, there's Peacock again, Mr. Mustard, they may all have been the murderer. We don't know. Any one of these guys have been the could have been the murderer, okay? And they could have used a rope, a knife, a candlestick, a dumbbell, a poison axe, bat, trophy, pistol, any one of those. And they did it in the dining room, conservatory, kitchen, study, library, billiard room. You get the point. Okay? So basically, we have three different types of things here. We have rooms, we have weapons, and we have suspects. And we're going to want to pick a random one of each one of these categories and put them together to find our murderer. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to have to make an array of objects. So let's go ahead and start with that. Right down here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to declare a array of, and this might happen. If you see things like this, don't, don't worry. It just means I'm not done typing and code pen's a little, you know, not patient enough. So you just hit clear. Okay, and so basically... I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to declare an array of suspects. We'll call it let suspects array. Okay? Let suspects array, and that's going to equal square brackets because all arrays are square brackets. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put each one of each person in there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab Mr. Green. Okay. We're going to go ahead and grab Dr. Orchard. Okay. And it's a little tedious. But we have to basically take every person and put it in there. Okay, and now, for instance, if I went and I wanted Professor Plum, let's say I made a spelling mistake and I spelled the whole thing out or something, I'm going to see an error like this. Okay, Professor Plum is not defined. If you see something like that, don't, don't worry about it. It just means if it's not defined, it means you probably didn't spell it correct. So you got to just go back up, check and see, oh, it's actually just Prof Plum like that and fix it. And that error, once you hit the clear, should be gone. Okay? So we'll move forward. Croft Plum, we have Miss Scarlet. Okay. We have Miss Peacock. Mrs. Peacock. Okay. We have Mr. Mustard. Okay. We have, no, that's it, I think, for our suspects. You hit the clear. I think I got everybody. Okay. Again, I just put everybody inside of this suspects array. And to double check, I can either console log suspects array. And I'll see it pop up like this. And there they are. There's a list of all my objects. Okay. Or I could also just type in suspects array down here. And you'll see there they are again. 
in the global scope. Okay, so that works. Awesome. So now we're just going to do the same idea, but with weapons and with rooms. I'm just going to cut and paste that down here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say weapons array. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start doing this. Okay. So we got, we can do this in any order we want because we're just going to be selecting at random. So it doesn't necessarily matter if you get the order right or wrong. You just got to type in each one of these things. Axe. Okay. Poison. Oh, and poison is spelled like this. All right. And we have dumbbell, candlestick, dumbbell, candlestick, and knife and rope. Knife, rope. Hit the clear. After all that, type in weapons array just to make sure it worked and it did here's a list you can see by the square brackets of objects okay i'm gonna take these two guys now and I'm bring them all the way to down here and i'm going to do our final array which is going to be let rooms array okay it's going to be square brackets okay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy again each one of these dining room conservatory Okay, this is a very big mansion, so there's a lot of rooms. Okay, kitchen. We have a lot. Oh, Jesus, we have study, library, a billiard room, uh, a lounge, a ballroom, a hall. Okay, a spa, a living room, an observatory. That's pretty cool. See the stars. Okay, a theater, a guest house, and a patio. All right, there it all is. All right, do we have any errors? Billiard room, billiard room. I think that's all right. Again, you can test it out by just typing in. The array right there and it looks like we do have some sort of problem so what happened here if there's this little exclamation mark it may sometimes tell you okay and it does it says ballroom is not defined so somehow i made this up it is really oh it's lowercase r okay and there we go Make sure all that matches. Again, if you all of a sudden something is not working, you may see an exclamation mark pop up like that. You click it, and it should tell you what's wrong. In this scenario, ballroom was not defined because it's ballroom, lowercase. Cool. Type in rooms array, and there it is. Type in weapons array. And there they are, type in suspects array, and there it is. Okay, if you're completely off, don't worry. I'm going to share all this code at the very end of the, the webinar. I'm going to hit save. Okay, and now we can move on to selecting a random one from each one. Okay, so how do we do that? So this is something that you see very, 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 like, it's very, very common in JavaScript. You see this math.random or console log math.random so what this does is it gives you a random number between zero and one okay all right and it does it every time okay between zero and one okay and What's useful about that is that you can get any random number you want by multiplying it, okay? So if you multiply it by five, now you're gonna get a number between, a random number between zero and five, okay? And you see that it's a very, very complex number with lots of decimals, okay? But it is in fact between zero and five and always will be. 
So if you want it to be a whole number, right, then use something called math.floor or math.ceiling, and now you'll get yourself a whole number that's random between 0 and 5. It'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, why did we want to do that? Why do we care about getting a random number between 0 and 5? Okay? Why do, why do we need to do this? And the reason is, is because we need a random object inside one of these arrays. And if you remember, to get an object inside of an array, you have to go ahead and use this square brackets and a number. So this one is going to be the third one, okay? Mr. Green, Dr. Orchard, Professor Plum, Miss Scarlet. So if I was to take this and I was to plop it in here, we would definitely see Sandra Scarlet, right? And all the stuff that we put into her uh, into that array from here. We see this specific object, okay? Let me go over that one more time, okay? So basically, whatever number is here, okay, is going to be the one we see. So if you want to see Mr. Green, that's the very first one. And here's Mr. Green, Jacob Green, okay? If we want to see Dr. Orchard, he's the next one. And there he is, Dr. Orchard, okay? And this could be not only for suspects array, but also for weapons array and rooms array. Weapons array one is going to be the trophy. This is the one, remember, it's zero index. This will be the pistol, okay? And likewise, in rooms array, the first room is the dining room, okay? And the last, or whatever, we'll say the seventh room is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's the ballroom, okay? And there you have it, okay? So now that we can go ahead and we know that we want a number here, we know we want that number to be between zero and however long this array is, okay? So for instance, rooms array is the longest one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got 14, all right? So if I was to take my math.floor math.random here, instead of saying five, I said 14, I'm gonna get a random room every time, okay? And that goes between zero to 14 and that's how I get it every time a random room okay so we don't want it 14 for weapons array because that's a lot less and suspects array is even less so really what we want is the array length so instead of rooms array 14 I want rooms array dot length which is 14 okay and why would I do that instead? Because this way I can use this over and over again, okay? So let me explain. If I take this, I take it out of here. This is going to be our random room. Likewise, we can have a random weapon, which is going to be the same idea, but it's going to be weapons array. Uh -huh. Math.floor, math.random, I am just copying what's above, only changing out the word rooms array for weapons array. Weapons array, dot length, okay? And now I will have my random room and my random weapon. There we go. We have library knife, okay? And if I was to refresh, we would have... Kitchen rope, okay? It's a pretty dark game, right? And so basically we have random rope, random weapon, and we can do the same thing again for random suspect. Or we could go ahead and take this stuff and just define uh, a function that will do it for us, okay? Let's go ahead and just write this out for now, and we'll come back to that. Okay, so we have random room, got random weapon, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say random suspect. 
And we're going to go ahead and we'll do the same thing. Suspects array. And we'll go ahead and we'll say math.floor, math.random, times suspects array, hot length. And there we now have our random suspect, our random weapon, and our random row. So in this scenario, Victor Plum, the billionaire video game designer, killed Mr. Body. That's his name. It's always Mr. Body. He's always a victim. Killed Mr. Body in the kitchen with a bat. It's pretty brutal. Okay. So here we have our mystery. Okay. So basically, we can go ahead and put these together into a function and make it a little simpler okay and go over what that does okay so a function for those of you who don't know is something that you can call okay so we're gonna say function pick mystery okay and this what this does whatever you want okay so you can go ahead i'm gonna stop console logging this for now okay i'm gonna hit clear you can go ahead and you can type in whatever you want. I called my function. And now what's cool about wrapping it inside of a function is that it doesn't happen right away like we've seen, but you actually have to call this like this in order for it to work. There it is. I called my function. Okay? So you have to actually call it. If you want it to happen right on load, you put it right there, and it'll call it right on load. Okay? So if we do this... We can actually take all these guys, plop them inside here, okay? Okay. Um, then we can go ahead and get our random suspect, our random weapon, and our random room at any time, okay? So here now, if I do that, Okay, and I'll go over this very slowly in a second. We'll see that I'm picking a random suspect, random weapon, a random room every time I call this function. Okay, so that means that this doesn't happen until I call this function. And how will I know? I'm going to go ahead and console log suspect, weapon, and room right in here. Okay. And I see nothing, okay? Again, let's do a little recap, okay? Basically, we took all this data from this Clue.js over here. We copied it. We pasted it in here, okay? And now we took all of these objects, bats, trophies, dining rooms, kitchens, etc., and we put them inside of arrays. So... We have a suspects array right there, which is a list of all the suspects. We have a weapons array, which is a list of all the weapons. And we have a rooms array, which is a list of all the rooms. If I want any specific room, I can access it by putting a number like this. This will be the third room. And it's the study. This would be the fourth room, the library, right? But I don't want it to be a, just a, a, the same number each time. I want it to have a random number in here. So I do that by using this little trick, math.floor, which will round the number, math.random times the length of this specific array. Okay. And we will see that there it is, a random room every single time. Okay? So, that said, we have a random suspect, a random weapon, and a random room whenever we do that. But we didn't call this function, so we don't see anything yet. In order to see, in order to do all this action, whenever it's inside of the word function, we have to call it by this name, pick mystery. And now you see the mystery, okay? You see that Cassandra Scarlet killed Mr. Body in the theater with poison. 
If I want a new mystery, I just call it again. This time, Jacob Green in the conservatory with the knife. If I call it again, okay, and again, and again, and again, every time it's gonna be different. Every time it's gonna be a random suspect, a random weapon, and a random room, okay? So what do we do with that? We can create our mystery, okay? So how do we do that? Well, function has a special power called return. And this return, if written like this, is going to give us back an object that has all of the stuff that we want in it. All right? So we can just return this. And then whenever we call this, it'll return an object with the stuff in it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what this means. I'm going to say let mystery equal pick mystery like this, okay? And so now you see lead mystery equals pick mystery. So you're like, well, this is really weird because this is, a, this is a variable assigned to a function that's being called. But if you look at the return, this is basically gonna be what's returned from here. This is almost like saying, this is the guy who's gonna make you the sandwich and you ask to make the sandwich, and then he returns you the sandwich, and now this is the name of the sandwich. Okay, but in our scenario, it's not sandwiches, it's a mystery. So now, because we did that, we've defined this word globally as mystery, and we can go ahead and type it in, and we see the mystery. That Dr. Orchard killed Mr. Body with the trophy in the patio. Okay, so now the word mystery actually contains the mystery and you'll see this right here dr orchard again in the spa with the bat okay and so again what we did is we called this function we picked three random things one suspect one weapon one room we returned an object with all three of those things and now we have that object okay so moving forward Okay, what are we going to do? Okay, after we have our mystery, we need to go ahead and we can do a lot of things, right? So we want to we want to have it so that the user has to guess what the mystery is. That's how this whole game works. Okay, so we get our mystery. This is behind the scenes, remember, right? The, nobody sees this part. Nobody sees the console. Everybody sees what you write in the HTML. Okay. This is what they see. So in the HTML, we're going to want the user to guess. We're going to want the user to guess what it is. We're going to do that by using inputs. Okay, so input looks like this. I-N-P-U-T, right? And you can say type equals text. Right? And it looks like this little text box. We've all used this, the Google stuff, and you can type in stuff like that. Okay, and this is known as an input. Okay. If you want the input to say something, you can use this placeholder attribute, okay? And this, for instance, is gonna be our suspect, okay? And so now you'll see the word suspect there, but when I click it and start typing, it leaves. The idea is I wanna go in here and I wanna say it was Mr. Green, okay? Or something along those lines, okay? I wanna say this suspect, right, killed, Mr. Body, that's the guy's name, who was always getting killed, okay? In the, put another input, say type equals text, placeholder is equal to uh, room, okay? Fill in the room, I'll put it capitalized, doesn't matter, okay? With the, and then we'll have one other input. Input type equals text. Placeholder is equal to weapon. Okay, and I'll take a second so you guys can write all that down. I'm sure typing as fast as you can. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened here. All I did was this. Three inputs, okay, with text in between. And it says the suspect killed Mr. Body in which room with which weapon, okay? 
and I want the user to type that stuff in. And when he's done typing that in, I want him to click, click a button that says like submit or yes. Okay, because you don't really know if it's right. Okay, so again, the idea here is that I'm going to do something like Mr. Green, so Mr. Body in the kitchen with the bat. And I'm going to hit guess, and then it's going to tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay, and that's basically how this game is going to work. Okay, so again, to do that, we're going to need inputs so we can see what the user typed. And then we can compare it with our mystery that we got earlier, which is this object that has all the pertinent information. Okay, so mystery.room.name is our dining room, mystery.suspect.name is our suspect, and mystery.weapon.name is our bat. So in this case, if I said Victor Plum, right, killed... Mr. Body in the dining room with the bat, I would get the answer right. I would say Victor Plum, so Mr. Body in the dining room with the bat, and I hey, guess I want I should have gotten that right. Okay, so let's focus on that part. So how how do I get that? Instead of console logging mystery, right? We can go ahead and say console log mystery dot suspect. Okay, and that's going to be our suspect.name. We have our weapon, mystery, sorry, mystery.weapon.name, and we have our room, mystery.room. Story, mystery.room.name. And I'm only calling it to logging. It's not super important that you do this part. Okay, it's showing you here that basically every time, we have suspect, the weapon, and the room. So if I had Eleanor Peacock, old Mr. Body in the billiard room, with the axe, and I hit some guess, I would be right. So how do we compare what we have right here inside of our mystery object with what the user typed? Okay. Well, before we do that, it would be nice to see the options, okay? It would be nice to see all of the options that we have. So I'm gonna write another function really quick that's going to display those options so we can at least pick them, okay? So again, we're gonna comment this out for now. Okay, we're gonna write a new function called show Show everybody, show everything, okay? I would say show arrays, show arrays, okay? And this takes an array as an argument, okay? So we're just gonna call it an array, and this is how you pass data into another function, right? So what does that mean? So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to call shows array, but this time I'm going to pass it something. I'm going to pass it. I'm going to pass it my suspects array. I'm going to call. I'm going to pass it my weapons array. And I'm going to pass it my rooms array. Okay. And if I do that, if I call it and I pass it, each one of these ARRs, this changes every time. First, it's going to be the suspects, then the weapons, then the rooms. If I scroll up, you see that everything got console logged here because I called this function three times, one, two, three times, each time passing it a different array of objects. So why did I want to do that? I wanted to do that so that now I can loop through these and show them on screen. Okay. So a lot of information here, okay? But we're gonna get into a little bit of DOM manipulation. Um, again, this is being recorded. Again, we're gonna be sharing the code with you. Um, I'm sure you guys are all busy typing away, but if, you, if you've gotten to a point where you can't really keep up as far as typing goes, just pay attention, understand the core concepts, and then you can just compare the code that I share with the code that you wrote, okay? And it should be probably pretty similar, maybe just a couple of syntactical errors, okay? so. 
showing the arrays. Okay, I'm going to use a for each method. And that loops through every single piece of the array. And it, it takes a function as an argument, okay? And so basically what that means or what that looks like is this. It takes a function inside of it. And in that function, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the name to the screen. And I do that by saying document, document referring to the HTML dot body dot inner HTML plus equals. Okay, and now you can write HTML. These are built in methods. Okay, and each item comes through here. Okay, one at a time. And now I can go ahead and I can say, okay, well, cool. I'll put a span tag, you put whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna surround this with back ticks. That's the one right here next to the number one on most keyboards. Color sign curly brace. Okay, this is known as string interpolation. Lots of vocabulary, lots of stuff to Google after this. Okay, and then each item has a name. Now if I do that, Boom, we see all the stuff, all of our possible options right there. Okay, let's go over that one more time. Okay. I call it shows array. This function, I called it three times, each time with a different thing. Okay, I'm gonna put a little space here so it's nice and neat. Okay, and then as it loops through, okay, let's go ahead and just make them list items, make it easier. Okay. Now as it looped through, okay, you saw everything that you could use, okay? So you saw each item from the suspects, every suspect, their name. Jacob Green, Dr. Orchard, Victor Plum. Then it went to the weapons. Each weapon, the name. Pistol, trophy, bat. Each, each room, the name. Dining room, conservatory, kitchen, okay? And I added it by this stuff right here document.body.innerHTML, okay? And that is a built-in method, and that's known as DOM manipulation, and this allows you to go ahead and inject HTML into the screen, okay? We are also gonna be using something very similar to get the value from the screen, okay? Again, document.body can do anything you want. So if I went, if I went and I said document.body is equal to, and it's cool, all right, document.body.innerHTML, sorry, inner HTML is equal to ain't this cool. The whole thing will be gone except for ain't this cool, All right? I can do whatever I like here, okay? And it'll replace the whole, our whole game with that. But what I didn't want to do, I don't want to equal it. I want to plus equal it so that I add it, not replace it. And this way, I've added all these things to our screen. Okay, maybe the most complicated part. So again, let's go ahead and write what this does. This loops through all of our arrays and shows each item's name. That's what we do with this function right here, and we call it three times. Okay, we have our mystery. Okay, this this function right here just goes ahead and gets random item. From each array and constructs the mystery. Okay. And then this is who killed Mr. Body with what in which room. Okay, and that's basically our mystery. And if you go here and you type the mystery, it's going to be random every time. Okay. A candlestick in a lounge. Okay, cool. All right. So that's it. We show in all our stuff. We show all our options, and we do it. Okay, and we have one last part to this game. Okay, and again, here's the HTML. This is all the HTML that we need. Okay, but actually, we do need to add one more thing. We need to be able to go ahead and get whatever the user typed in here. Okay, and again, we're going to be using a document dot body. Okay. But this time, we're not putting stuff in, we're taking stuff out. We're getting information out of here. 
Okay, and I think the easiest way to do this is to give it an ID. So we're gonna give each one of these an ID depending on what they are. So ID equals room, ID equals suspect, and ID equals weapon, okay? Again, this one was the suspect, this one's the room, and this one's the weapon. So I added an ID. This is not the only way to do this, right? But this is the way we're gonna do it. I added the ID. And now you can see right here that this suspect will have this ID of suspect, this room, this ID of room, this weapon, this ID of weapon. Okay, cool. So what does that mean? So that means that we get to use yet another method. So you saw inner HTML, and the last one we're going to use today is called query selector. Okay? So for instance, query selector lets you go ahead and pick things anything you want and if any of you are familiar with css it's the same syntax so here for instance if i put in quotes my idea suspect okay which is this guy right you can see that that's the same html right there if i went there and i say for instance remove him i didn't put gone i could go ahead now and remove my room okay and I could also go ahead and remove my weapon, okay? And I can do this with this little hashtag slash weapon because that matches this ID. If it was a class, it would be a dot, right? And so here we go. Let's not do that though. Let's go ahead, press enter. Let's get back to normal, okay? Go ahead and hit enter there. Okay. Load, refresh. There it is. Okay. And let's hit the save button. Don't want to lose that. So let's hit the save button. Okay. And basically all we do is add an ID suspect, an ID room, an ID weapon. And now when the user clicks this button, okay, we're going to use, so we use three different methods. We use body inner HTML, query selector, and an on click event. We're going to go and get the value. I know this is a lot. But I assure you, it always feels like a lot at first, but once you go and you do it a few times, it feels very easy and natural. So really go ahead and just practice this, okay? But basically right now we need to do one last thing and we need to know when this button is clicked, okay? So when this button is clicked, we're gonna go and we're gonna get the values from each one of that. So what does that look like? You do document dot query selector button. So now I got this guy. I got this button right here. It's the only button on the screen, so this should work. This is my button, and I say on click, I'm going to want you to do this function, okay? And what's the function exactly, right? You say equal, and you say the name of the function, okay? So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to say function. We'll call it uh, um, guess. Okay, so we'll say function guess, and we'll say console log, here's the guess. Right, well, console log just guess. Okay, hit the clear. And now if I say on click equals guess, now whenever I click this, I see the word guess. That's all I did, okay? So in case anyone got lost there, I just did this one line, document.querySelector.button on click is equal to this function, and all this function does is console log guess. I'm going to want it to do more, of course, in this function, but I'm just going to show you this right now as you guys copy that down. Okay, so now how do I get what the user wrote in here? Well, I already have who killed Mr. Body with what and which room. I have that. It's called mystery. Okay, I returned it from this function where we did the random stuff. So if I say guess, right, if I go ahead and after that I say console log mystery, I already know who did this. I actually wrote this console log, I wrote right here. I'll take this. I already know who killed who, or at least my program knows, in what room with which weapon. So if I go ahead and I click guess, I know that Eleanor Peacock used a bat in the billiard room, right? Okay, I know that every time I click it, I do it. It only changes if the page refreshes. Okay, 
Now it's Dr. Orchard with the trophy in the spot. Okay? So if I have this information, the only thing I need to know is what the user typed in here, okay? And then I can go ahead and I can compare the two and then decide if I was right or wrong, okay? So basically, how do I do that? I go ahead and I get to use document.query selector again. This time, I'm not selecting the button. This time, I'm selecting the input and I'm getting the value, okay? So I'm selecting the input, but the input whose ID is suspect, okay? So now, we can say let guest suspect equals this. Let me make this a little smaller so you guys can see it. Oops. All right. Okay. Let guest suspect equal this. And we're going to say let guest uh, weapon is going to be equal to the weapon value. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say let guest room is going to be equal to the room value. All right. And so now I have the mystery values here. And if I console log the guest values here, guest suspect, guest weapon, and guest room, okay. I should, in fact, see what I typed in here, right? So say I say Victor Plum, okay, killed Mr. Body in the billiard room with the bat. I guess I see that this is my guess, Victor Plum, in the billiard room with the bat, but the real answer was Eleanor in the study with the axe. Okay, so I was wrong on this guess. Okay, and I can do that because I look, I, you know, just with my eyes right here and I just compare these values. So how would I do that with JavaScript? I would use an if statement, an if else statement. An if else statement will compare two things, okay? And in the scenario where it's true, it'll run there. In the scenario where it's false, it'll run there. So what I do, as I say, hey, look, if guest suspect, oops, I'm sorry, I was supposed to put that in there, is equal to mystery.suspect.name, okay, and I, I spelled guest suspect wrong, okay, and this is how you check if it's equal, either two or three equal signs, and guest weapon is equal to mystery dot weapon dot name and guest room is equal to sorry three equals mystery dot room dot name then I guessed right alert you guessed right You win. Okay? Else, you guessed it. You guessed it. So now, after all this, okay, I'll put this in a way that's maybe a little more legible. You say, okay, if that is equal to that, and this is equal to this, and this is equal to that, okay? And we've guessed right. Okay. So now let me go ahead and say, we'll say you guessed wrong. And we'll also go ahead and say alert. The answer is this. All right. He killed Mr. Body. In the uh, 
plus with the cool. all right so again a lot of stuff here but we'll be sharing this code so no worries but here we go if i guess now in my app here if i guess that jack mustard Kill Mr. Body in the spa with the pistol. Okay, I think this has to be capitalized. Yes, I guess wrong. Eleanor Peacock killed Mr. Body in the patio with the bat. Okay, so it's a pretty difficult game, clearly, right, because you have to guess correctly. Let's get rid of some of these consoles. Okay, and let's try to get one right. Okay, so say Jacob Green killed Mr. Body in the billiard room with the knife, I guess. And of course, it's wrong again. Jack Mustard killed Mr. Body in the Battle of the X. But you can see our app works. If we wanted to do a little, little, maybe we wanted to let's see, refresh here for a second. Okay, if we wanted to maybe do a little cheating to see what happens if we got right. We would type in our mystery down here. We see that, in fact, Victor Plum killed Mr. Body in the lounge with the trophy. And we guess. Then we guess right. We win because they matched. We guess suspect is equal to the suspect. The weapon, the weapon, the room, the room. Okay? And that's basically the game. Okay, we can also maybe add a little fun thing here at the very end and just show a photo of an image of the murderer. Okay, and we'll do that by saying document.body.innerHTML. Okay, just like we used up here, it's equal to we'll make it an image. Okay, and this image is going to be the mystery dot suspect dot image and we get that from our data up in here okay so now we can go ahead we can play the game again okay and i'm going to say that uh dr orchard i feel like he's the bad guy killed mr body in the billiard room with the axe okay i'm gonna say that i'm guessing this i have no idea i hit guess i am wrong in fact, Cassandra Scarlet killed Mr. Body in the ballroom with the bat. And oop, I spelled document wrong. So let's do that one more time. Okay, here we go again. This time I'm feeling lucky. Let's see. This time I think it might be Eleanor. Eleanor Peacock killed Mr. Body in the hall with the pistol. We guess. Nope. The odds are not super great for right here. Press OK. Victor Plum killed Mr. Body in the dining room with the knife. Press OK. And there he is. Right? Or that should have been Professor Plum. But you get the general idea. Okay? And we go ahead and restart this and hit save. Okay? So let's go over what we did real quick, quick, quickly. We're not going to add any more stuff. Okay, of course, you can keep doing stuff and adding more and more stuff. The way Clue really works, I believe, is if you get one part of these questions right, at least we know that to be true. Okay, but that would just take even more logic. And I'm sure you guys are already swamped as is. So let's just go through the little bit of JavaScript that we wrote. Okay, all this stuff, all these objects, we basically just go ahead and copy and pasted them in. Okay, pistols, trophies, dining room, they all had names. They all had names. Okay, we made three arrays. Okay, and each array is filled with those objects. So we have arrays of objects. So we have our suspects array. Okay, and it's filled with our suspect. We have our rooms array, and it's filled with our rooms, etc. Okay, we wanted to get a random one, a random suspect, a random weapon, a random room. Okay, so we have this function which is something that you can call and it returns something. You call this function, 
picks a random suspect, a random weapon, a random room, and returns it. And we save this object as a, the word that we call mystery. Okay, so inside of mystery is the murderer. Who killed Mr. Body with what in which room? Okay, we went and we made a little show arrays function here. This was optional. We did not need this. Okay, you know, we can. it would still work without this. We just wouldn't have this list. Okay, so, but we wanted to have that list. So we had the show arrays function, which looped through each thing, each array, and added their name to the HTML, okay? And then we, add, we put an event listener, that's what this is called, on the click, which calls the function guess when clicked, takes the value of each one of these, whatever I typed in here, all right, so Jack Mustard killed Mr. Body in the... Observatory, observatory with the poison. Okay, so I need to know what I wrote, these three words, and I got them with this this guest suspect, guest weapon, guest room with query selector and the value. Okay, I hit guess. Okay, I compared my answers with the correct answers that are inside the mystery object. Okay, I guessed wrong. Okay. That say the right answer, which is the miss suspect name, plum kill Mr. Body in the study with the candlestick. Okay, and then <laughs> I think I put plum in there. Okay, I don't know where this console log is coming from, but that's the right photo. Okay, we got to go ahead. That's who I guessed. I see. Okay, all right, and let's go ahead and say guessed. Wrong. Okay, one last time. Go ahead and we'll see a different picture. Hopefully this time we'll say Jacob Green. Killed Mr. Body in the hall with the, I have no, let's see, trophy. Okay. Guess, guess strong. Dr. Orchard killed Mr. Body in the spot of the candlestick. And there's Dr. Orchard. And the picture should be different. But Professor Plum seems to be a pretty bad guy because he keeps showing up. Okay. Cool. All right. I Cannot see you guys right now, so I'm not sure how far we are, if we've, if we've gotten this or not. But basically, we have built our app, and I believe that it's pretty cool. Okay, we've gone over DOM manipulation. We've gone over ill conditionals. We've gone over functions, arrays, objects, and um, hopefully had a little fun in the meantime. So I think that just about does it. Uh, Raquel, are you there? I am. Hi. Uh, you can you can show up as well, Val. Uh, so I, I know. Thank you, Nico. This was amazing, guys. <laughs> like this was too so much. This was very <laughs> intense. So <laughs> now that you can review everything, this can be intense. If you've never heard of JavaScript, if you've never heard of arrays of objects and so on, this can be intense. I know. I'm also doing the web dev bootcamp in part time. So you can review this. Don't worry about it. Uh, we still have a little bit of time, though, if you want to ask a few questions. I don't know. And let us know were you able to code along or are you going to try again at home? Let us know. If you still have some questions regarding this webinar, the, the exercise that we did, the app that we built, you actually built an app yourselves. This is amazing, guys. Is that Andres Weber? Sorry, I just saw one of the chat. I think I know that. And it's, it's funny about the Forrest Gump comment as well. <laughs> yes, uh, you were compared to Tom Hanks, Nico. I don't know if you saw I, that. I know. That's that's cool. <laughs> I mean, Toy Story was, I would prefer that guy, but, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, again, if you still want to ask a few questions, we will give you a little bit of time if you want to about Iron Hack, about our courses, or about this webinar. Uh, but, uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, Emil, if your connection was lost. This is all recorded again, so you can see. Hey, Alpha. How's it going? <laughs> uh, I know some of, some of my, my ex-students, previous students. It's amazing. That's amazing, guys. So here, uh, again, if you, uh, the code, some of you were asking, here's the link. I will also uh, paste the link of the code pen that we used here mm -hmm. on the topics. Okay. 
on the ask a question section you can upvote it or not because uh, i've already passed the answer to question so uh, everything that's in here uh, the comments the ask a question everything that we shared in here will be here after we go through the the recording so if you check the recording everything will be in here so you'll have access to the links and so on uh and that's amazing Irene. that you just got lost for the last five minutes that was that was amazing amazing job um so we have one question here which is a very um technical question thanks nico from gerald one question why do we need to add the like the hashtag in the let uh, guess guest suspect document query selector and then it has hashtag suspect Pardon. So uh, the query selector is basically to let you select anything you like, and it, it works kind of like uh, IDs and classes. So if you want to select an ID, just like in CSS, you use the hashtag, and if you want to select a class, just like in CSS, you use the dot. So if you want to select the button, you might have noticed I didn't have an ID, or a hashtag, or a dot. That's because it's just the HTML element. So I could have also done the same thing with just the input, but there was three inputs. There was only one button, there was three inputs. So I separated each one by an ID, and then I used the hashtag and that ID. Yeah, so pretty much it's syntax <laughs> answering your question, Gerald, to identify an ID. Uh, so uh, there was another question here from, uh, from, from Sesco. I hope I'm seeing your name right. Does Iron Hack offer courses for intermediate to advanced web development? So we have a bootcamp on web development, as we said, both part-time and full-time. And for it's the same, it's the same bootcamp for time by, or full-time in each campus. And you can enter this bootcamp regardless of your background. So if you if you've never heard of web development before, if you've never coded in your life, you can join the bootcamp. You don't need this background. We have uh, a I mean, the range is enormous. We have a lot of people from a lot of different places. Uh, you will be given uh, a few introductions to, to web development before starting the course. And you leave the bootcamp as a junior web developer. I don't know if this answered your question, uh, but this will be the training that you will have. So the bootcamp, no background, then you have the bootcamp, and then you leave as a junior full stack web developer. So you'll be learning front end and back end. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you for this, for these feedbacks, guys. Um, I don't know if you still have some questions or if you, Nico or Val want to add something. No, it's just been a very, it's been a pleasure guys. Thank you for listening to me. I know it was a lot of material that we covered. Uh, you know, just keep practicing and, uh, and thanks. Thank you guys. Amazing. Yeah. And, and welcome Rodrigo to the, to Iron Hack. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see you in another webinar. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.